Right off the lobby of the Aperva Kempinski are a couple of balconies affording one heck of a view. Down the front of the resort's main building and out over the two adjacent wings extending towards the shore. Lush tropical landscaping create a unique vista down over the center pools, past the brilliantly shining beach and out into the Indian Ocean. Maybe one day you'll find yourself standing on one of these balconies, nursing a welcome drink and waiting for your room to be ready. When that day comes, you'll likely be thinking to yourself, I've done something right. Hey, this is JR, aka The Tourist. I'm still in Bali, and today I'm bringing you to the Aperva Kempinski Bali, the most architecturally stunning property I've ever stayed. Come inside with me and we'll have a look around. But do remember, this is not a review, it's merely my impression of the property. You enter the resort through this courtyard, following the path around this central pool to the lobby. As we set off, I'll remind you, if you're enjoying this peek inside and want to see more of these types of videos, please let YouTube know by hitting the like button. The Aperva Kempinski sits toward the south end of Nusa Dua, on the eastern side of Bali's southern peninsula. Nusa Dua is mostly known for its five-star resorts, which sit on some of the island's best beaches. The Kempinski is one of the newer additions to Nusa Dua, having opened in 2019. As the resort's name hints, Bali is a traditionally Hindu island. Bali and its immediate neighbor Java were ruled by a succession of Hindu and Buddhist kingdoms prior to the 16th century when the Dutch founded the colony that would later become the nation of Indonesia, and Islam came to dominate as the major religion. In Bali, Indonesia's Hindu past remains on display. Normally, I don't waste much time on hotel lobbies, but this lobby warrants exception. The space inducts you into the hotel's indigenous aesthetic and sets the stage for the grander reveal of what awaits on the other side. The first striking element is this large art piece sitting at the lobby entrance. It rises like a flame towards the tiered roof, granting a good sense of scale. The lobby is in the form of a pendopo, a pavilion-like structure that is typical of Javanese houses and compounds. Pendopos were used to greet important guests, as well as gathering places for royals and their ministers, for scribes, musicians, or other important members of the community. I saw several of these structures in use when I visited the Sultan's Palace in Yogyakarta in central Java. The Aperva Kempinski is rooted in traditional Indonesian design, though at a scale not like many other places on the island. The design represents both the Javanese heritage of the Majapahit Empire, as well as having many facets reflecting a specifically Balinese heritage. For instance, the design of the main building is inspired by the island's terraced rice paddies and by the Subuk irrigation system. We'll see those elements more clearly when we leave the lobby and head down the back side of the main building in just a moment. My check-in was smooth, though I did have to wait a little bit for my room. No worries at all. This gives us the opportunity to continue exploring the lobby and to go and appreciate that view I mentioned at the beginning of the video. In this part of Nusa Dua, the sea is abutted by ancient cliffs of limestone covered by dense tropical forest. The Aperva is built into its topography in a most imaginative way with a large main building cascading down towards the sea, taking the form of an open-air theater. Those with cliff suites have the equivalent of box seating. Generally, the most impressive rooms in Bali would be villas, but here at the Kempinski it may be the cliff suites, which boast private pools along with their stunning views. For this visit, I don't have one of these suites. I'm staying in a standard room. A little bit sad, yes, but it does stoke the motivation to get back here. And when I do, I'll bring you along with me. If you don't want to miss it, then consider subscribing to the channel. I post hotel and resort impressions, destination guides, and more. And I'm just getting started. Join me, and we'll tour the world together. I'm staying in a grand deluxe garden view room, which is the entry level category. The Grand Deluxe rooms are all located in the two wings extending towards the beach on either side of the center pools. 
They are split between garden view rooms which face outwards from the property and ocean court rooms which face into the interior of the resort. Welcome to room 6215. The elegance of the lobby design carries over into the spacious rooms. The layout of the room works well, with one exception that I'll note in a moment. The Kempinski manages to be both contemporary and traditional at the same time. By comparison, I stayed at the Alila Semenyak a couple of days before the Kempinski, and it is a very modern and chic property, but there's not so much that feels particularly Balinese over there. Before the bathroom, the minibar. While the room is clad in dark materials, which paired with the wooded exterior makes for a dark atmosphere, the bathroom is the opposite, quite light and airy. I'm a big fan of this tub, though, although I never got to enjoy it. Let's have a quick look at the closet, which is placed awkwardly by the front door, and then continue our walk around the resort grounds. There are a few different pools on the property. This shallow one is for kids and even has a water slide. I'm a big fan of the property's main pool, which we'll see in a little bit. Speaking of kids, here's where you'll find the kids club. As I said earlier, and this is not a review, there are other channels that do very good hotel reviews. I only want to show you around a bit. That said, I do like to provide a little context to help you decide if your perfect Kempinski is the right property for you. Without further ado, I present the tourist do's and don'ts. Do stay at this hotel if, well, just do. You should stay at this hotel. I've stayed at four of Nusadur's resorts and visited a couple of others. If it's in your budget and you appreciate this kind of exceptional architecture, I highly recommend the Aperva Kambinsky, especially if you're reserving one of the cliff suites. My superfluous and shameless praise aside, there are reasons why you might want to stay somewhere else. For instance, if you're a fan or have high standards of another hotel chain, there is a Ritz-Carlton and a St. Regis property in Usadua that are both comparable, if not a higher level of luxury, as well as a Conrad just north of here that is an excellent value for the rent. And yes, Usadua is about the resorts. There's not so much going on here outside of them. So if you want to be close to the nightlife and sights, you may wish to consider a different location in Bali. I will note that my estimation of this hotel is relative to the rate. I've not stayed at the Ritz-Carlton next door, but my guess is that they offer a more typical high-touch luxury service experience than here at the Kempinski, but at rates 15 to 20 percent higher. With that out of the way, let's see the rest of the property. The resort fronts the Indian Ocean on a picturesque stretch of beach. Yes, the best beaches in Nusadua for bathing and swimming are to be found a bit further north, but I couldn't find a whole lot to complain about here. Again, the appeal of the Kempinski is largely in its stunning views from both the resort and of the resort. Located right next to the beach, you'll find the Reef Beach Club. 
Beach clubs are a fixture in Bali. Think of them as resorts without the rules. Somewhere you can go and stake out a lounger in a place by the pool and eat, drink, and be merry. Calling this a beach club is a bit of a gimmick, but you get the idea. I had a late lunch here on the day I checked in. Something very simple. But the menu has more to offer. And if it's a meal on the beach you fancy, that can be arranged. We're almost finished with the tour. Let's head back toward the main building and I'll show you a few more things. Here's that pool I mentioned earlier. Besides its size and its position facing the beach, the thing I like is these crenellations lining the outside. They create these little private areas around the much bigger wide open pool. It's the best of both worlds. Just past the pool is the Apollo Restaurant, the hotel's all-day international restaurant, and where breakfast is served. I'll give you a peek at what's on offer and note that the spread looked pretty good. Fortunately, I had a bit of Bali belly this morning and didn't sample much of what was on offer. Right next to Palau, or rather underneath, you'll find Coral, where you can dine in the midst of an aquarium. I didn't eat here at this day, but it's one of the things that will bring me back to the Kempinski. My son would love this place. As we make our way back towards the main building, I'll briefly mention the resort's other food and beverage outlets, which include Izakaya Bayoku, as well as Bayou for Chinese, and the Selassar Deli just off the lobby. The last stops are just below the lobby level. Here you'll find the gym and the spa. I didn't have any spa treatments this trip, but I did check out the gym. It's a good sized gym for the size of the resort, and has a good mix of strength and cardio equipment. This is as good a place as any to end the video, and why not end with a parting shot of the beach? Thanks for watching until the end. Stay tuned for future hotel impressions and more.